Have you ever heard someone refer to a road as tarred? Or maybe you've heard someone call it tarmac? Maybe you've even used the terms interchangeably without giving it much thought. But are tar and tarmac actually the same thing? Well, not quite. Today we're diving into the sticky, gritty world of roads, runways, and the materials that keep wheels turning, literally. Let's break down the difference between tar and tarmac and why it matters more than you think, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with tar. Tar is one of the oldest construction materials used by humans, and it goes back thousands of years. Believe it or not, ancient civilizations like the Mesopotamians were already using natural tar, also called bitumen, to waterproof boats and buildings. It's a thick, sticky black substance that oozes out of the ground in some places, or can be made by heating organic materials like wood or coal. Now, in the context of roads, we're mostly talking about coal tar, which is produced when coal is heated in the absence of air. During the 19th century, when coal was king and gaslighting was booming, coal tar became widely available as a byproduct. People began experimenting with it as a binder for roads, and for a while it worked pretty well. Tar helped keep dust down on dirt roads and held gravel in place, but it wasn't perfect. Coal tar is prone to softening in heat and cracking in cold, and it emits harmful chemicals, especially when heated. Over time, better alternatives emerged, like bitumen and asphalt. But even today, especially in everyday language, people still refer to paved roads as being tarred, even when no actual tar is involved. So what about tarmac? Well, tarmac is actually short for tarmacatum, and that's where things get interesting. In the early 1800s, a Scottish engineer named John Loudon Macadam developed a road construction method that revolutionized travel. His idea, called macadamization, involved laying down layers of crushed stone and compacting them. This method created roads that were much more durable and less muddy than traditional dirt paths. But the problem was that the surface would scatter under heavy traffic. That's where tar came back into the picture. Around 1901, another engineer named Edgar Purnell Hooley patented a process where tar was sprayed over a macadam road and then sealed with stone chips. This gave birth to tarmacadam, or tarmac for short. The combination of stone and tar created a much smoother, more durable surface that didn't kick up dust or crumble easily. Tarmac quickly became the go-to material for airstrips and roads in the early 20th century. It was strong, relatively easy to apply, and a huge improvement over loose gravel roads. That's why, even today, we often refer to airport runways as the tarmac, even if they're not actually made of it anymore. Here's where things get a little confusing. The word tarmac is still used all the time, especially in airports or in casual conversation. But actual tarmac, meaning tar-based macadam, is rarely used anymore. That's because tar, particularly coal tar, fell out of favor due to health and environmental concerns. Plus, it's not as chemically stable as other binders. Instead, most modern roads are made using asphalt concrete, which uses bitumen, a petroleum product, as the binder instead of tar. Bitumen is more flexible, more stable under temperature changes, and doesn't carry the same environmental risks so technically, what we're usually driving on isn't tar or tarmac, it's asphalt. But tarmac stuck in our vocabulary. It's kind of like how we say we're dialing a number on our smartphone, even though there's no dial involved. Language hangs onto old habits, even when the technology changes. 
Let's take a quick sidebar to talk about bitumen, since it often gets lumped in with tar. They're both black and sticky, sure, but they're chemically quite different. Tar comes from heating organic material like coal or wood, while bitumen is a byproduct of refining crude oil. Tar tends to have a more complex and unstable chemical structure, which makes it more susceptible to changes in weather and time. Bitumen, on the other hand, is more refined, literally and figuratively. It's more consistent and stable, making it better suited for modern road construction. So even though older roads and airstrips may have used coal tar, newer projects almost always use bitumen. And since bitumen is used in asphalt, most roads today are technically asphalt roads, not tarmac roads. Still, the old terms persist. The reason so many people still confuse tar, tarmac, and asphalt comes down to habit, history, and the fact that they all look pretty much the same. All three are dark, sticky, and associated with roads and runways. Unless you're in construction or engineering, there's really no pressing reason to learn the difference, which is exactly why the confusion lives on. In many countries, especially in the UK and former British colonies, the word tarmac is still widely used to mean any paved road, even if it's technically asphalt. Meanwhile, in the US, people might refer to roads as being tarred, even though they haven't seen a drop of real tar in decades. It's one of those linguistic quirks where the word outlives the material. But once you understand the difference, you start seeing roads in a whole new light. You realize that what seems like a plain black surface is actually a carefully engineered material with a long and evolving history behind it. So to wrap it all up, tar is the original sticky substance made from coal or wood. Tarmac is short for tarmacatum, a mixture of tar and crushed stone patented in the early 1900s. But in modern times, both have been replaced by asphalt concrete, which uses bitumen instead of tar. Yet, the old words live on, popping up in casual conversations, airport announcements, and roadwork signs. It's a great example of how technology moves forward, but language, and our habits, don't always keep pace. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.